Moving across the country can be an extremely exciting thing. You're moving to a new area, a new type of weather, new type of people all around you. But with the good, there is also some bad things. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the top 10 pitfalls that you need to know about if you're considering relocating to St. Augustine or anywhere in Northeastern Florida that you should really consider before you make the move. What's up everyone, my name is Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to me and my team. All we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on what you wanna do, which is buy, sell, or invest in real estate here in Northeastern Florida. And hey, I may lose some sales because of this video because I'm kind of pointing out some of the pitfalls, some of the negatives, everything that happens when you do relocate. It's happening in there. But my whole goal here is to be transparent and give you guys the good information. Now, the first thing you're probably worried about is you're gonna be moving to an unfamiliar area. You know, where you currently live, you know all the, you know all the local towns, you know the best spots to go, you know all the people there. And that's something that's really tough when you're moving to a new place and you're looking to buy right away is that you necessarily don't know what that neighborhood's like, what the, the people in the neighborhood is like. No, I, I... And how you can kind of find your niche of people within that community. I actually just recently had a past client reach out to me who bought in one neighborhood and their family bought in another neighborhood and they wanted to be close but not exactly in the same exact neighborhood as them. And they're actually uh, meeting with them this week so that they can put their home on the market because they wanted to move to another neighborhood that had more activities, had more fun, had more people getting out and getting to know each other because they didn't find that in the specific community that they were in. So to avoid these things, which you want to do is make sure you research the area thoroughly. I have a whole list of neighborhood tours on here. You can pretty much look at a good bit of the new construction and the resale neighborhoods within the area here just through the neighborhood tours. But I also would, you know, even preface that with saying you should probably go and stay there and make sure that you like it. Um, one thing that we do as a team is when we have our initial consultation and we get an idea of what you're looking for, we provide you with a PDF. And before we even want to show you any houses, we want you to go ahead and check out all the neighborhoods that we put on this PDF. We also put some you know, coffee shops, bars, restaurants, something else for you to check out so that you can kind of get a feel and just become better educated as a buyer relocating to the area that you like it or you don't like it, right? And it's like, that, help, that helps me because at the end of the day, I can show you the most beautiful house that you love, but if you don't like the neighborhood, then I just wasted your time and potentially your money. Get some help. Another thing you can do is look at local Facebook groups and just drop questions in there. I mean, I see it all the time and it's one of the best strategies. The one little asterisk I will put to that is most people go online just to complain or be combative. You will find a good bit of people that give you the straightforward information. But then you have some people who will just whine and complain because they had a negative um, you know, experience in that community for whatever reason. There's also people that stay in those community groups long after they move and they just like to be trolls and we see that all the time. Another thing you can do, and this is kind of my experience from what I've seen with other families that I've helped relocate here, is move into a new construction neighborhood. Not only are you gonna get one of the best deals in the market, but you're also going to be able to move into a new neighborhood where everyone else there is pretty much brand new. You know, especially if these neighborhoods are within a year or so old. They don't have their, their, their niche, their group of friends in the area yet. They're more than likely moving from a different area to this new construction, or they're within St. John's County, they left their old neighborhood, they're coming into this neighborhood and they wanna make local friends. They don't wanna have to drive all over the place to hang out with some cool people. So that's where I think new construction neighborhoods really shine is because a lot of people that are moving into those neighborhoods are not exactly from St. John's County a lot of the times. Now I don't have official statistics on that, but I, I bet if you were to take a good poll, the majority of people moving into those new neighborhoods are from outside of St. John's County. The second thing that you might be worried about is not finding a home in the right amount of time. Now, this was especially stressful uh, the past couple years because our inventory was so low, but recently we have seen inventory start to come back up to pre-pandemic levels, which gives you a whole bunch of options, which is great. So you're not pigeonholed into the one house that 10 other buyers are looking into. You have 10 houses that maybe one or two other buyers are looking at, and that's something for you because it helps you negotiate a better deal for you and you get a better choice of houses. But nonetheless, this can be a very stressful thing, especially if you have a home to sell wherever you're coming from 
and timing it down here. And that's really where you need to have a solid agent relationship here in the area and also back where you're selling your home so that we can communicate and get on the same page with everyone because this is there's a lot of moving parts to this and it takes a village in this scenario. So the solution really is to start the process as early as possible, get the pre-approval done, talk with an agent, talk with a couple of agents and interview them. And then also make sure that you have a backup plan. Do you have family in the, in the area that you can stay with? Is there a short-term rental option, maybe a month-to-month -month option that might work better for you? Do you need, are you building a home? Do you need to go into a three-month, a six-month lease? You want to start putting these plans in place and also looking at the cost of these plans because doing a month-to-month -month rental, doing a three, six-month lease is a lot more expensive than doing an annual lease. The third thing that you should be worried about when relocating to a new area is going to be the unexpected costs that pop up when you're going through this process. Whether it's a moving truck, whether it's a short-term rental, whether it's just travel expenses, there are a ton of unexpected costs that you may not be factoring in to the whole equation of your relocation here. And that can cost you some big, big money. For example, a lot of people that relocate to our area, they'll tend to hire this huge moving truck and move all their stuff from up north down south. That could cost you ten dollars to $15,000 depending on how much stuff you're moving. And that's probably, you know, in the middle range. You know, you have a lot of stuff could be more than that. Oh, you got so if you're relocating a whole bunch of stuff down to Florida, the one thing I would definitely keep in mind for that is if you're moving to a new construction house, you're more than like likely looking at like a coastal style home. So is your furniture from the Amish in Pennsylvania going to fit the style and what you're going for down here in St. Augustine? Probably not. Probably not. I know they make great furniture. I know. But it's heavy as hell. And it's not exactly going to fit the vibe here. Now, if you're in the middle of Pennsylvania, Amish furniture, go for it rock out. But you want to keep that in mind because you should declutter and just get all the stuff that you don't need out, what you don't want, what you give it away, give it to a friend, give it to Salvation Army, Goodwill, whatever that is, and declutter on your way down here because you're going to save yourself on moving costs and you're also going to save yourself because you're going to you're going to bring it down here, you're going to throw it out, and then you're going to buy something new anyway. So that's the best solution I have. The other solution I would say is to create a budget for this whole process, right? I'm, I'm not a super analytical person. My wife is a little bit more analytical. She'll do the budget and everything. I barely look at our bank accounts. She does all that kind of stuff. I just, I don't have that mind for it. But if I needed to, I, I would actually do really well in that situation where I could line item everything. Most people aren't like that, right? And it's, it's very tough to do, but you can find them online. They give them out for free. I can, I probably should design one and start giving them out as like a lead magnet, but um, just get a checklist of everything that you need, everything that's going to cost, get a roundabout estimate of things and have a contingency fund just in case. The fourth fear that you're going to have when relocating is that you're moving to a new area. You don't know the market and that you're probably going to overpay for a home. You know, you don't want to move somewhere and make a bad move initially. And then you're underwater in your house. That's a pretty simple solution, especially today in the world of technology. It's very easy even for yourselves to look up comparable properties in that neighborhood to get a good idea of what the price for that property is going to be. Comparative market analysis, show you what has sold that is like kind within the past six months. If we can't find anything past that, maybe past year. But we always like to stay within the 90 day range because that's going to give us the best temperature and pricing in the market today. Aside from that, the best tip I have is watch my YouTube channel because I do the market updates very often. You should see what's going on here, how, how hot our market is in certain neighborhoods and everything. I I can get all of that data for you. So working with a good agent is the best way to go to make sure you're not paying the highest price possible. For example, on average throughout St. John's County, our market's selling about 96% of list price. So if a home is listed at a million dollars, it's selling for $960,000. Now, of course, that's an average. Depends really what neighborhood you're looking at. Some are hotter, some are colder just depends. So if you are looking at a specific area and you want to know this data, just reach out to me directly. And the third thing, and this is really important to know if you are getting a mortgage, is banks make it really, really hard to overpay for a house. I've had a couple deals barely skate by because of appraisal issues. So essentially an appraisal has to be done on anything with a loan on the property. The bank wants to make sure that their investment in you buying this home is not a stupid investment and that if they do need to get out for whatever reason because you can't pay, they're going to get some of their money back. So they want to make sure that that home appraises. Essentially, all an appraisal is, is a third party's opinion of value that represents the bank. So if you have a home that's listed at 
$420,000 and it goes under contract for $420,000 and it doesn't appraise for that, let's say it appraises for 410, well, someone's got to make up that difference, right? And in today's market, I feel that appraisers are being extremely close with their numbers because of how hot our market got. It was the opposite before. When our market, our market was appreciating month over month, really, not even year over year, it was double digits. When we were appreciating that quickly, appraisals and appraisers couldn't keep up because they were having to go in the past to look at the market data to see because we were having multiple offers on a property. People were offering over the list value for the property to win it. And then they were running into appraisal issues on the back end because the appraiser couldn't justify it with how quickly things were moving. Now in today's market, our market has kind of flattened out. We are still appreciating, I think year over year at this point, we're in the middle of the year. Uh, it's July as I'm videotaping this, we're only up about one and a half percent year over year. Now, June and July are the typically most expensive months of the year to look at buying a home in our area, depending on this average seasonality of how our market goes. But that appraisal is typically in your contract. Make sure whatever agent you're working with, if it's not me, that you talk about your appraisal contingency and what that means for you. That protects you in the contract. It protects you from paying too much for the property. And that's really the bank protecting itself. The fifth fear that a lot of people have is that they need to sell their home wherever they're coming from and they need to come down here and buy a home and they need to time that up pretty perfectly. Now, a lot of that has to do with the temperature of your market where you're coming from. Now I have people that are from the Northeast that relocate here and their market is still extremely hot. They can sell their house in a week and two weeks if they wanted to. Yeah. So, and that's getting the top dollar for their property. It's not like they're undervaluing it. In other markets, it's not the same. And if you're trying to make a move down here and time everything up perfectly, you need to be aware of that. So if you know your market is taking 90 days on average to sell a home, well then if you wanna make your transition here as smooth as possible, then you need to be willing to price your home very aggressively so that you get people through the door and get under contract as soon as possible. Because if I'm a seller, if I'm representing a seller on our end and someone says, hey, I wanna buy your house, but I have a contingency of my home to sell, I'm gonna call their agent wherever they're selling their house and ask them what's going on with the market, What's the days on market there? How soon do you think this house is going to sell? What's the pricing looking like? I'm gonna ask all these questions because I wanna make sure that we're not gonna hold up my seller from doing what they wanna do. So if you go under contract and let's say that your market is a 90 day and you're not upfront with that, well, you're dragging the seller for three months, right? And if I'm representing the seller, that's what I, I wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. I wanna make sure the seller can do what they wanna do because they may be buying as well and they may need, may need to sell in order to buy. So really, this is a domino effect. We, all, we need to be in communication. And like I said earlier, it takes a village. So the solution to that is pricing your home extremely aggressively. And it also depends on your market. If your market's hot, then you just price it you know, effectively and you should be within that, that stretch of period where everyone's comfortable with the timelines. I would really try to get everything done for all parties within 60 to 90 days. Anything past that is kind of just unrealistic at this point. There are also options of bridge loans. Um, you could do that. They're gonna cost you a little bit of money money. Uh, so that's an option for you as well. Or if you don't need exactly the proceeds, let's say you could qualify as a buyer just getting a loan. 99% of loans in today's world have no prepayment penalty. So you can make the move here, you get your house sold there, you don't have to worry about closing on the specific date. And then whenever you get that chunk of change from your house sale over here, you just take it and you throw it on the loan that you have so that it lowers your, well, it won't lower your payment, but it'll shorten your payment. And the sixth fear that a lot of people have is like, what if it doesn't work out? I'm moving down here for a job. I'm moving down here for a different lifestyle. What if I just don't like it? And that's something that I think all of us struggle with, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. The grass is always greener. You're always going to find another opportunity or think about your life differently in a different way. But what I would say with that is just take it with a grain of salt. You know, the best solution I have to that is do your research as much as you can. Research the job that you're moving for. Research the lifestyle that you're moving for. Make sure that's something that you really want to do. Is it worth it to relocate down here? Or maybe just come visit a couple times a year. Is it worth it to take a job down here? You know, the pay, the, the cost of living here versus where you're at. Is it the job that you want? Do you want to move forward with this company? There's just a whole bunch of questions regarding that. So just research, research, research what we've seen, if it's the right move for you. And the one good thing about this YouTube channel is that we got plenty of it. It's all here for free for you guys. Um, so make sure you watch all the, the content that we have. We have podcasts that I interview locals, um, interview a lot of the prominent business people here. And I also have, you know, a whole bunch of videos just like this where I'm talking to the camera, kind of giving you my insights. And the number seven fear is something that probably would make the, the biggest uh, 
issue for a lot of people would be your family not adjusting. Maybe you move here and you love it, but your kids, you know what, they had a good life up north. They loved it up there. They had their friends. They had their community. And now they move down here. You know, their, their life changed so quickly and they don't like it anymore. Well, that's not going to make it an easy home life for you, right? So obviously this is probably to parents. I'm like preaching in the choir, but you want to get your kids involved in this decision, right? Especially if they're at that age where maybe they're entering in high school and or, or they're, they've been in high school a couple of years and you're going to be switching them up in the middle of it. You want to make sure that they're going to be comfortable with it because at the end of the day, we all know what that can do, especially when you have, a, you know, there's people that just have a core group of friends, you know, when, when they leave high school, when they go to college, all that kind of stuff. Um, and when you leave that and you move to a new area, it's really hard, especially for kids. Kids can be mean. We all know that to develop new relationships. So the best thing you can do is involve the family, everyone in the family with the decision, mother-in-laws, kids, dogs, bring them into the equation, have a conversation with what you guys want to do. Make sure you visit and spend some time here and get to know the areas. That's, that's really a big deal. Can you see yourself? Can you see your family? Can your kids see themselves living there? Visit the schools, go check them out, do your research, because this is going to be a big move for you. And then also, I mean, within our area, if you're if you're at a new construction community, they already have like most of them have lifestyle directors where they put together all these events and everything. A lot of kids in those neighborhoods, a lot of new schools. So a lot of the people are new there. So that does help out a tremendous amount. But within St. John's County, there's tons of activities for kids to do and community groups and just to get together and volunteer, or go, go, you know, go mountain biking or go play baseball, whatever that is, Little League Baseball, Popcorn Football, they got all that kind of stuff here, right? So get them involved and get them out, you know? And that's the same thing for the parents, right? Or even if you don't have kids, you're just re relocating, retiring, just go out and get involved. You can find a group for something you want to do. You just want to go out on dinner dates with people and go have, you know, wine and cheese boards. They got that. You want to go to, uh, you know, join some people at golf. They got that too. It, it's, there's tons of things to do here to get actively involved in and make a lifestyle for yourself. And the eighth fear, which really has more of like a monetary type of feel. I feel like we talked about a lot of emotional lifestyle stuff before, but this is more or less like, hey, you're gonna buy a house and then home prices start going down. That's a potential, right? I don't have a crystal ball of what's gonna happen in the future. What I can tell you is what's happened the past 90 days, how the market is right now and what my temperature is on it. From what I can see, we've had interest rates for, you know, set at 7% for the past two years now and our market has appreciated, right? So unless interest rates go up to 10, or um, you know, a hurricane hits St. Augustine, I, I, I can't say whether a market's going to go down. But from what I can see from the past experience, I do think it's going to continue to, it's going to be stable. It's not going to be the meteoric rise that we've been seeing before. I think we're going to see you know, single digit appreciation year over year. And that's honestly, it's healthy. You know, we don't need you know, 10, 15% month over month, one, 2% increases uh, like we had in the past. That was not sustainable. So I'm super glad to be back in more of a regular market. But what you want to do is choose a stable neighborhood. You want to make sure that you're getting the competitive market analysis and negotiating for for yourself, right? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be helping you negotiate this process, but really this is just a going back and forth with the seller and what what where can we meet in the middle and everyone's happy? Because at the end of the day, the seller's not going the seller's not going to say yes to an offer they're not happy with, right? They've got to be ready, willing and ready, willing and able to move forward on this as well. So what we need to do is find that middle road. The other thing I would suggest if you were super concerned about this is uh, look at the neighborhood and buy in a neighborhood that is under the median sale price here in St. John's County. Median sale price is around $550,000. You can find a ton of homes that are under $550,000. But that's probably the best way because if the median sale price goes down, I, I really don't see that you know 200 to 500 range being affected too much because that's the majority of like where first time home buyers are, maybe a move up buyer. That's where the majority of those people are at. The ninth thing, and this may be more of a worry for you New Yorkers, is uh, the legal complications of everything that you go through here. Now, Florida is a title state, whereas New York, for example, is an attorney state. The attorneys write the contract there. Here in Florida, we have fill in the blank contracts, which I write out. <laughs> The, the contracts are pretty much all the same unless you're going with new construction. New construction builders have individual contracts um, that they have written up by their attorneys that are specific to the builder. So every single one is different. Whereas the majority of the resale contracts are all written on the Florida um, standard contract, which we refer to as the far bar contract. So for the most part, we just wanna make sure that within that contract and with, depending on your situation, we have the contingencies in there that protect you for pretty much 
on, on all the contracts, you have the inspections with the right to cancel. So your first, you know, this is a negotiated time, but typically it's 10 days. First 10 days of the contract, you can do whatever inspections you want. You can leave for whatever reason. You have the right to cancel. It says it black and white on the contract. Then you also, if you're getting a mortgage, we're going to look at an appraisal contingency. We're going to look at a mortgage contingency. The house has to appraise for purchase price. That's your appraisal contingency. So that protects you. If it doesn't appraise, you could walk away. We go again. If you could also negotiate and you know try to find a middle ground, maybe that you come with a little bit of money, the seller comes down a little money, maybe the seller comes down all that money. It just depends. And then the mortgage contingency. If you were to lose your job for whatever reason, if, if something were to happen where you weren't able to get that mortgage, they're not going to force you to buy the house. So those three things are going to protect your earnest money, your binder deposit, and it's also going to protect you in that contract. Now, of course, there's other contingencies depending on your situation. Let's say you have a home to sell. There's a home to sell contingency so that you need to sell this house in order to buy this house and that protects you in your contract. If all else fails, I definitely recommend this. If you are feeling like you do need a little bit more handholding, I recommend talking with an attorney. We have a couple great uh, partners that we work with that if you wanna have a conversation with them and have them walk you through the process, especially if you're looking at new construction guys, you wanna get this done. And I recommend this. I'm not an, I, I'm trained on the FAR bar contract, right? I'm not trained on the individual builder's contract that they develop and they change however much they want to, okay? So you definitely, if you're looking at a new construction contract, run it by an attorney. It's worth your while. <laughs> and the 10th fear and this really it shouldn't be too much of a fear if we've if we've already gone through all the detailed steps you know uh, of you buying a home but the transaction just failing and falling out um, at the last minute something that you, you don't really have much control over well the good thing is is that when you work with a team like I said it takes a village everyone's looking out for your best interest because at the end of the day if we don't close on a home I don't get paid the lender doesn't get paid title company doesn't get paid all these people do all this work for no reason so we're all looking out to make sure that we can get to the closing table and we're not wasting any of your time but we're also not wasting any of our time right so a lot of this has to do with um, your, your lending you know if, if something's gonna fall out it's typically gonna be because of lending and we've had some really close situations where the last couple of weeks we didn't have a couple of things done and it affected when we could close. We push closing back, try to figure it out. And we've had situations where people just cancel at the last minute, right? The seller really doesn't have much of a choice. Once they sign the contract, they're kind of locked in. They almost have, they have to sell um, unless they want to get into a legal battle with someone. Regardless, most people aren't going to do that. You know, they don't want to deal with a lawyer and go through this long drawn out process. They'll just go to another house and you know, lick their wounds. But for the most part, when you're a seller, you're kind of locked in. As a buyer, you know, you do have your, your appraisal contingency, your inspection contingency, and your mortgage contingency. All those protect you. So you could fall out at any minute. But that's also one of the good things about those contingencies is like, hey, if for whatever reason you lost your job, well, you have a mortgage contingency and that protects you. Right? And that can happen. There's no, there's nothing that I can do. There's nothing the lender can do. If you lose your job at the last minute, that, that really sucks. So you want to make sure that that's really your, your, your field, right? And, and working with this. Otherwise, get all the docs to the lender. Get me all the information I need to have, right? Communicate with all of us effectively and we'll communicate with each other effectively so that we get you to the closing table. Awesome, guys. And that is it. Those are the top 10 pitfalls that I could think of when it comes down to relocating to an area and, and buying a new home. And these are some of the fears that a lot of people have. A lot of the past clients that I've worked with have dealt with and, and have experienced personally. If you gained a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of insight from this video, do me a solid. Tap the subscribe button below like the video and comment if you have any other questions, any other fears that maybe I didn't cover here. If you are looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to me and my team. Like I said before, all we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision what you already want to do, which is buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida. Until next time, guys.